Hi everybody and welcome back for our fourth week of our STEM Summer Passport program. I hope you guys um, have been having fun with all of our activities and with our different lessons and you've been learning a lot. Um, again, my name is Raylynn Embleton and I work here at the Hill Aerospace Museum and this is... I'm Rachel Griffin. I'm an intern here. Yeah, Rachel's been with us for uh, this summer helping us with our lessons, behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, um, a couple housekeeping things before we start. Um, again, this week is week four of our passport program. As with the other weeks, we will be outside in the air park from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, passing out packets, talking to you guys about your experiences and your experiments and all that type of fun stuff. Um, and then more exciting announcement next week, August 5th, the museum is going to reopen. Yay. Um, important note with that. Um, yes, you will have to wear masks. Um, but the second important note is our hours are a little bit different. Um, it's go we're going to be open Wednesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. Um, and this back gallery is not going to be open till August 12th. Um, and hopefully we'll have something really exciting for you guys when we open this back gallery, um, which we'll tell you about when the time comes. Um, along with that and reopening, um, if you would like to, if you've been following along with our STEM videos and you want to find um, more information, more in depth, you're welcome to email us, call us. Um, our information is right there or on our website. Um, and we are happy to give you a class um, on, this, on these different lessons in more detail. If you just want more and want more science, um, just give us a call, email us, and we'll set up a time for you, okay? So getting to this week's lesson, weather, exciting. Um, so we are going to talk about air pressure and how that affects weather, okay? So the first thing we need to know about air pressure is when we are going up in elevation, right? So here in Utah, we have a pretty high elevation because we're on the mountains, right? Um, do you think we're going, there's going to be more air pressure on us or less air pressure? Take a second, think about it. Comment your answer if you're watching. What do you think, Rachel? More air pressure, the higher elevation or less? Um, I think less. Less, yeah, she's right. Yeah, there's less air pressure on you the higher in elevation you go. So that means here in Utah, we actually have less air pressure on us all the time than they do in California where it's at sea level, right? Um, so a good way to think about this, if this concept is kind of like, okay, this is making my brain hurt, is we are under an ocean of air all the time. Okay, so the closer you get to the atmosphere or to space, there's less air pressure on you because you're higher in the ocean. Make sense? Hopefully that helps. Okay, so with that difference in pressure, with elevation, um, it does change things, right? Changes yeah. things just a little bit. Um, and to prove to you guys that we really do have a bunch of air pressure on us all the time is I have this mat on the table here. And this just looks like a normal mat, right? Just chilling on the table. Um, but Rachel, will you try and lift that up for me? Sure. She can't do it. <gasps> oh, she did. Was that hard or easy? What was it like? Yeah, it was hard. It's like suction cupped. It's like suction cupped. So the only thing that's keeping this, yeah, Rachel will show them the bottom, that's is just air pressure. Okay, so there's 14 pounds of pressure pushing on that. So it's really hard to lift up. Um, if you don't believe us, that's fine. Um, when we're out in the air park, we'll bring this with us so you guys can try and lift it up too, so you know that we're not joking with you. Um, so with that column of air, as you change your elevation, it changes things, right? So um, when we go on a road trip to the mountains, what happens to your ears? They pop. Yeah, they pop, right? As you go up the mountain, they pop because there's differences in air pressure, right? So there's a difference in the pressure in your head and outside. So your ears pop to kind of equalize that pressure, right? So what happens when you go down the mountain? They pop again. They pop again? Why? They have to equalize again. Yeah, they have to equalize again. Very good, that's awesome. So um, that also changes a couple other weird things, okay? Um, let's go on another field trip, a more fun field trip. We're gonna go to California and we're gonna go swim at the ocean, right? We're gonna party 
um, in the USA, have a good time at the beach, um, go swimming, hang out. Um, but Rachel and I have been out there now for a while, right? And we've just been partying. So what do you want to do now? I'm hungry. Oh, you're hungry. Ooh, let's have some food. What do you want? Mm, some hot dogs. Hot dogs. Okay. Yes. And I'm the best cook in the world. Not really. Um, so I'm going to cook us the hot dogs. And this is how I cook hot dogs. You probably cook hot dogs differently. Disclaimer. Um, so we're going to build a big fire. Okay. And we're going to have a little stove and put a pot of water on it. And we're going to put the hot dogs in that water and cook the hot dogs that way. Okay, so the water starts to boil and we take the temperature, right? Because this is a science trip and that's what we do. We record things as scientists. Um, what temperature is that water boiling? Um, 212 degrees. Yeah, 212 normal. degrees Fahrenheit. So normal um, boiling point for water. Um, that was a fun trip. We eat our hot dogs and we have more energy. If you remember our first video, so we can do work or play. Um, so we can go swim more, get super sunburned because I'm very pale. Um, so we have a good time. So fun, in fact, that Rachel, do you want to go on another field trip? Yes. Yeah. Where do you want to go this time? Um, let's go to the mountains this time. Ooh, the mountains, which is which are beautiful in Utah. So we're going to go up to the mountains and our ears are popping the whole way up. And we get up there um, and we're having a good time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, fishing in streams, watching all the animals. And we're super, super high in elevation, like above where the trees go, that grow the timber line. So we're having a good time fishing, watching mm -hmm. stuff. And then what do you want to do now? You're getting hungry again. You're getting hungry again? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. So we're going to do the same thing. Okay, we're going to build a fire, put our uh, pot of water on it, and we're going to cook our hot dogs. Uh, I think they're done. Will you go grab them for me? Yeah, sure. How do you grab them? I just put my hand straight in. <gasps> grab them out of the boiling water. What? Are you okay? Yeah, it didn't even burn me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so on the beach, Rachel definitely would have burned, right? 212 yeah. degrees is just a little bit too hot for people. Um, but she didn't get burned on the mountain in the boiling water. Why do you guys think she didn't get burned? What is different? What's different? It must be the air pressure. Must be the air pressure, especially since we're talking about it, right? Yes. Yeah, so the boiling point of a liquid, like water, actually depends on pressure more than it depends on temperature. So with, again, higher in elevation, less air pressure, so the boiling point of water actually drops. I have right here this beautiful uh, red liquid in a glass container. And in this container, we took out all the atmosphere, all the air pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna have, um, Rachel, will you take that and will you just hold it in your bo bottom hand? Yep. What's it doing? <gasps> oh my gosh, that water's boiling. Just the, you're hot. Just the heat of your skin is making that, bo that water boil. That's so weird. Okay, Rachel, now I want you to take your other hand and put it on the top and take your other hand off. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. She's boiling it backwards now. Oh, that's so cool. We used to get on the table. Um, so this is called a hand boiler. Um, and fun fact and shameless plug, we actually have these in our gift shop. So when we open next week, you're welcome to come buy them or uh, buy these online from our online gift shop. Um, but this is a problem for astronauts, right? But it also is a problem for pilots, but not every single pilot. So let me, let me grab this sign real quick. So I forgot to mention to you guys, will you hold this other side for me? I forgot to mention to you guys, but I am in front of this beautiful, plane called the SR-71 Blackbird. It's basically the coolest plane ever. Um, and one really, really cool thing about this plane is that it flies really, really high. Okay, so when you are taking a plane, like to your grandma's house in California or New York or wherever, um, you're flying about 20,000 feet. You see that uh, graphic down there? That's a regular airplane. Okay, so you're flying high, but not that high. 
The SR-71 flies at the very edge of the atmosphere or at 85,000 feet. That's about 50,000 more feet than a regular airplane flies. And since those pilots are at the very edge of the atmosphere, they have to wear a special suit. So on my left side here, we can stick this down. On my left side here, I have a flight suit that these SR-71 pilots wear. Okay, now since, again, they're at the edge of the atmosphere, um, there are six different layers to ensure that they stay pressurized at all times. Um, and this suit helps them so they don't pass out from lack of oxygen being that high up. Um, and also it helps them so their, the liquids in their body don't vaporize or boil, right? That'd be pretty bad. You're flying a plane and the, the liquid in your eyes start to boil. That's a bad day, right? Your plane's definitely gonna crash. So those guys wear this suit, they wear this helmet. Um, and when we reopen this gallery in two weeks, um, you're welcome to come take a look at this plane, ask our volunteers, our docents about this um, flight suit, and they will be happy to provide you with more information. So we've just been talking about pressure, right? But we haven't talked about weather. And we said this was a weather lesson. So we got to talk about weather. But what does air pressure have to do with weather? A lot more than you might think. So if it's high pressure, just take a random guess. Do you think it is sunny weather or cloudy weather? What do you guys think? Just totally random. What do you think, Rachel? I think it's sunny weather. Ooh, you think it's sunny weather. She's right. She's definitely right. If it is high pressure, that means it is sunny weather outside. And if it is low pressure, that means it's cloudy weather. So here in Utah, do we have mostly sunny weather or mostly cloudy weather? What do you guys think? Think back on like the last like six months. Mostly sunny, right? Yeah. Mostly sunny. So here in Utah, we mostly have high pressure. Um, we have a lot of air falling on us. Uh, right on top of us besides our normal amount of air pressure um, that chases away all those clouds. Um, a place like Seattle, Washington, where it's always rainy, do you, would they then have high pressure or low pressure? It'd be low pressure. It'd be low pressure, mm -hmm. right, because it's cloudy. Um, and to prove to you guys and to have an experiment that you can do at home, um, we're going to do our experiment, okay? Um, and this is the one that we had for the week. So let me show you guys how to do it. And Rachel's going to help me again. Okay. So these are the materials you need at home. Okay. We just have a regular bottle, um, rubbing alcohol, and you can also use water. Um, when you use water, instead of rubbing alcohol, you're going to need a lot more water. Um, and you're going to need a bicycle pump. And we have a needle on our bike pump or a um, ball pump. And then you're going to need something in this bottle to stop it up. Okay. So we have a little piece of styrofoam. You can also use a cork. Um, you can try and use duct tape and see if that works, if you can get the pressure tight enough. Um, you can also use um, some bike pumps have like a Schrader valve on the end that caps the pressure. Um, you can use one of those. Um, just as long as you stop it up somehow. Okay, so you take your whatever you're using to stop up the bottle, squish it in there, squish it in. Oh wait, hold on. Before you squish it in, you need to add your liquid to your bottle, right? So our rubbing alcohol, we're gonna stick a couple drops in here. I always end up putting way too much rubbing alcohol. There we go. And you're going to kind of swirl it around the bottle so it gets in all the different parts. And again, if you're using water, you're going to want to use more water than the rubbing alcohol. Okay, now I'm going to squish this in. You don't need it to be all the way in. It can kind of stick out just a little bit. Um, and make sure that your needle is long enough to go through whatever you're using at the cork. Okay, so now I'm going to have Rachel stick this in here. And you do need two people to do this experiment, preferably one as an adult, just to make sure you don't hurt yourself, okay? Um, so I would 
suggest that the adult do the holding of the bottle because we're going to put high pressure in this bottle and you, um, the kid or student or whoever you are, um, do the pumping. So I'm going to have Rachel put like eight pumps in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in here we have high pressure. Oh my gosh. That's low pressure, right? Because we let all the air out. Do you see that cloud? Yeah. So what's happening is that pressure difference is um, causing that liquid in there to evaporate and to form a cloud, right? I'm going to get our cloud out. Oops, and dump rubbing alcohol on the floor. I promise I'll clean that up, everyone, before you get here in two weeks. Um, so the next thing that you want to do is after you have that low pressure and that cloud in your bottle, what do you think would happen if I put this stopper back up and put more high pressure in the bottle. Think about it. What do you think, Rachel? What do you think is going to happen when we put more high pressure in to the cloud? Um, it'll make the cloud even bigger. <gasps> it'll make the cloud bigger? Do you guys think Rachel's right? No, she's not. Another answer that I get a lot when I do this with schools is people say it'll make the cloud rain. Good guess. No, it's not. It's actually going to make the cloud disappear, right? Okay, well, let's see if we're right. So, again, let's do about eight pumps in here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. High pressure, low pressure. And now we're going to put more high pressure in. Oh, my gosh. Did you guys see that? It totally disappeared, the cloud. Sorry, I'm getting really excited. Um, so low pressure means cloudy and high pressure means sunny. I promise you air pressure and weather are connected. We are so happy you guys could join us again for our STEM summer passport. Um, please tune in next week at 11 a.m. on Friday and we hope to see you outside in the airport. Have a good Friday, everybody.